Hello everyone, I'm Paul Polino and I'm glad to see you again. In today's video, I want to talk about node-based workflows in texturing and four reasons why I made the switch from layers over the past couple of years. In this video, I'm going to focus in Mari, which is my main texturing software, but I also use other programs that use nodes such as Substance Designer, Houdini and Nuke to assist my workflow. Until 2019, I was reluctant to start using the node graph in Mari. My whole training in school was done in layers and I was quite confident with my skills. Nodes, they didn't make any sense to me, mainly to the lack of experience with other software. Uh, I was really afraid to leave my comfort zone. But then I was lucky enough that I met some incredible artists that were prolific in using the node graph. And they were also kind enough to teach me how to use it properly. So I took the opportunity and I learned as much as I could from them. It was a humbling experience to start something from scratch and go through that learning process again. Now, if I'm honest with you, I cannot see my work life without nodes anymore. If just like me, you're afraid to try nodes because it challenges your comfort zone, I hope this video can help you decide if you want to make the transition as well. So today will be an overview of the node graph, but don't worry, in the future, I'm gonna make some in-depth tutorials about it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, okay? Thank you so much and let's go. The first thing I noticed when I started using nodes was how fast and optimized my workflow became. Instead of having to open each channel to see what was inside, now I could quickly have an overview of my project and make multiple selections at the same time. And just like Nuke, the ability to see each layer through the viewer is a time saver. To have the layer system working properly, in the background, Mari needs to auto-generate certain nodes. If you have a layer-based project in Mari and decide to open the node graph, we can clearly see how messy it can be. But if you start your project with nodes, you can bypass the creation of merges and bottom transparencies, keeping your project tidy, organized, and optimized. Also, if you have the latest version of Mari, you can use geo channels to quickly access information in multiple parts of the graph. Or you can use the amazing Mari extension pack to create radio and transmitter nodes. This is one of the main reasons why I don't think I can go back to layers in Mari anymore, because the ability to develop templates that can easily be used in multiple projects and share with other people, it's extremely powerful. To exemplify this, I'm going to show you a simple template I created for my hard surface projects. As you can see, I have my channels, auxiliary masks, and isolate masks ready to go. Now, if I want to use this template somewhere else, I can easily export it like this. Then let me open a new project now with a different model. I'll clean up my node graph and then import a template I just exported. Now I only have to rename a few things and import my maps into the paint nodes I have. Mari is also getting more into shader development, which is awesome and I'm sure it can be useful for a lot of people. But since I have not explored these features yet, I would not get much into it today. I'll do more research before I make a video about it. Bake points are so awesome that they deserve a video on their own. They are powerful nodes that are gonna help us manage complex setups, and it's a great practice to have them across a graph. Bake points will allow us to bake information from our downstream chain or specific nodes. When the bake is up to date, it's gonna turn green. And if you make any adjustments, it's going to turn red flagging that the baked information is now out of date. This is incredible to keep track of our textures across a project. Bake points will also reduce baking time when we are exporting our textures. If you have that information already stored in bake points, the software won't have to evaluate them again. There are a few specific nodes that you can only access them via the node graph, and my favorite ones are also included in the Mari extension pack. We can plug in many different nodes here and achieve complex procedural results easily. For example, many phone nodes from the extension pack are going to allow us to transform coordinates such as position and normals. You can use it in procedurals to change scale, translation, and rotation values. Another powerful node is the AB wipe, which you can use to compare different nodes, just like in Nuke. I also like to use the multi-mixer node, which acts like a giant merge that you can use to plug multiple inputs. You can use this node to make complex blendings or use it as a color preview. 
And of course, there are many other nodes that we can explore here. I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can take a look at some of them. Before we jump into our recap, I want to point out a few things you should keep in mind if you're thinking about making a transition from layers into nodes. The learning curve can be quite steep, so be prepared to endure a period where nothing is going to make sense. Trust me, I've been there and it's not pretty. Understanding how nodes work can be really hard for some people. It was really hard for me. So if you want to give it a try, start small and practice with simple projects first before you get into more complex workflows, okay? And in the future, I plan on making some node-based assignments here so we can practice this together. Getting familiar with other node-based software such as Substance Designer, Nuke, and Houdini can also make the transition easier for you. And another thing I wanted to keep in mind is keeping your graph organized is even more important than if you're using a layer workflow. Since we have access to the whole project, it can become a mess easily. So make sure to keep it as tidy and clean as you can. Now to our quick recap. The first reason was faster and optimized workflows. With the node graph, we can easily have an overview of our project and quickly make adjustments. It also removes the processing of a lot of nodes that would just slow us down otherwise. The second reason was the ability to develop and share templates across projects. This is super handy and saves me a lot of time during my setup. Third, big points are the holy grail of an optimized workflow. They help us keep our project light and it's a good practice to use them all the time. And the last and the fourth reason was using nodes that are only available via the graph to create complex procedural workflows. Many folds can give us a lot of control to take our procedurals to the next level. And that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you're using the node graph yet or you still prefer to use layers. In the future, I'm going to have more in-depth videos for many of the nodes we talked about today. So stay around and don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button, okay? And as always, I see you next week.